Hi everyone, welcome to the Edu Avenue's TJ Test Prep YouTube channel. Through our YouTube videos, we hope students gain an understanding of how to approach and solve different types of math problems seen on the TJ admissions exam. Even if you got the problem right, watch this video as you can learn helpful problem solving strategies that you can then apply to future problems. If you want to learn more about our services, please visit tjtestprep.com. And if you like our video, please consider leaving us a like and subscribe below for more content. Today, we'll be going over the real math and science problem solving essay prompt from the 2016 TJ admissions test. Again, this is the actual essay prompt, problem solving essay prompt for the TJ admissions test administered in January of 2016. A big misconception is that the student portrait sheet and problem solving essay are new. The reality is that the problem solving essay has existed for several years as a part of the TJ admissions process. So we're going over the 2016 prompt now. Before doing anything else, please watch the following videos to gain a better understanding of how to solve problems dealing with speed, distance, time, and rate. The links are in the description as well. Now, on to the next problem. So the question that appeared on the 2016 exam is, it's 5.30 a.m. and as a helicopter pilot, you've just been told that there's an injured man on a boat that you need to get to a hospital. The boat is going towards where you are at 10 miles per hour, but that boat is currently 400 miles away. You need to get him as soon as possible, but you only have 6,600 pounds of fuel in your helicopter, which burns 1,200 pounds per hour and always travels at 150 miles per hour. Also, you need to account for 30 minutes of fuel spent hovering over the boat to get the man into the helicopter and, a, and one hour, one extra hour of fuel due to helicopter standards. Therefore, when can you depart your station to go get the man as soon as possible? So as with most TJ admissions problems, we begin by setting up a framework. The first step is to determine the flight time of the helicopter. So, you know, how much time or how, how long can the helicopter fly before it runs out of fuel? Uh, next, we're going to determine the distance that the helicopter can travel um, and, and resultingly uh, how much the boat must travel. And then we determine the best time to leave the station based off of what we find as the common meeting point. And then we discuss the underlying assumptions and clearly state our final answer. So our first step is to determine the flight time. So we can find the flight time of the helicopter by dividing the amount of fuel the helicopter has by the amount of fuel the helicopter burns per hour. So if the helicopter has 6,600 pounds of fuel and it's burning 1,200 pounds per hour, uh, that gives us 5.5 hours or five and a half hours of flying time. Uh, and this is, uh, you know, the, the total flying time that we can have, but we have to account for some constraints that the problem gave us. It said that we need to take away 30 minutes of fuel um, and, and set that aside because we're going to be hovering over the boat just to get the man into the helicopter. And then we need to account for one extra hour due to helicopter standards. So in total, we need to be taking away one half or one and a half hours of fuel uh, from this figure. So, uh, you know, we take the original five and a half hours and then we subtract one and a half hours and that leaves us with four hours uh, that the helicopter can fly. So, you know, we're, we're using a diagram uh, to display this. Um, to kind of sh show you this visually, um, you know, of the total five and a half hours, 30 minutes of that is taken up with just hovering over the boat. Another hour of that is taken up uh, with uh, helicopter standards. And so that leaves the four hours, right? This four hours right here um, to, to fly back and forth. So next we're going to be determining distance. So how far can the helicopter actually go with four hours? And, um, you know, that will also help us better understand uh, how, how far the boat needs to travel. Because if the helicopter can only travel a certain amount, um, then the boat's gonna have to travel the remaining amount. So since the helicopter needs to go there and back, right? So it has to go get the man, retrieve him, and then come back. Uh, it can only use two hours of fuel each way. Um, and that's because we had four hours initially. And you know, going there, it's gonna take two hours of fuel. Um, we're going to do the one and a half hour thing. And then, uh, you know, we have two, we have two hours of fuel to come back. And so uh, this helicopter can fly 
at 150 miles per hour. And therefore, the helicopter can travel two hours times 150 miles per hour. So the hours in the numerator and denominator for the units cancel out. Um, and we're left with 300 miles. So two times 150. Um, 300 miles is how far the helicopter can travel on the way there. And then it can travel 300 on the way back. And so in the two hours that the boat travels to get to the helicopter, so, you know, let's say the helicopter starts on one end um, and it's traveling, you know, for two hours, it goes 300 miles. In that same amount of time, uh, you know, the boat's traveling as well and the boat's going the other way, right? The boat is traveling at 10 miles per hour. And so for two hours, the boat is going 20 miles. So we've now covered a distance of 320 miles. And so in two hours, the helicopter travels 300 miles, the boat travels 20 miles. This leaves 80 miles unaccounted for. So you know, we've, we've accounted for 320, but we still have 80 uh, that we need to cover. So this additional 80 miles will need to be covered by the boat uh, before the helicopter leaves the station, right? Because we don't want the helicopter to run out of fuel. So that means the boat has to travel an additional eight hours. Um, so the boat's gonna be traveling for a while. And that means that it's traveling eight hours before the helicopter even leaves the station. So looking at this in, in more of a diagram format, because you can always come back to the diagram to solve some of these problems. So there's 400 miles that need to be covered in total. In two hours, the helicopter um, on the right side is gonna cover 300 miles. And in two hours, uh, the boat is covering 20 miles, right? So that's the 320 miles that, that we've accounted for. Um, and then the boat must travel 80 more miles. Um, so that means that it's traveling for eight hours longer than the helicopter's traveling. So the boat's actually traveling for 10 hours total. Helicopter is only traveling for two. And so looking at this, we have, you know, the 400 mile distance, uh, you know, initially in that two hours, we have 20 miles being covered by the boat and we have the 300 miles covered by the helicopter and the boat's covering uh, that remaining 80 miles because we don't want the helicopter to run out of fuel. So hopefully you're, you're understanding how this is set up at this point. Um, so now the, the question that we're really trying to answer is, you know, when should the helicopter leave the station? Um, and so, you know, that's, that's really the next step is determining the best time for the helicopter to leave. And in the last step, we found that the boat needs to travel eight hours more than the helicopter. Um, and so we can add it to that, you know, initial 5.30 a.m. figure that we were given, right? And so if it's currently 5.30 a.m. Um, and the boat needs to travel for 10 hours total, um, but two of those hours is, you know, also going to be traveled by the helicopter. That means the boat needs to be traveling for eight hours uh, before the helicopter even leaves. So the boat's going to travel that initial 80 miles first. And then the helicopter is going to leave um, after those eight hours at 1.30 p.m. Um, and the boat's just going to keep going. So the helicopter is traveling 300 towards the boat and the boat is covering the remaining 20. And so that gets us to our meeting point. And so at 5.30 a.m., the boat departs. In eight hours, it covers the 80 miles. We get to 1.30 p.m., and that's when the helicopter leaves. The boat just continues to go. And in another two hours, the boat covers 20 miles. The helicopter covers 300 miles. So they're really meeting at this kind of 100-mile marker over here. Um, and at, at 3.30 p.m., the helicopter and boat intersect, and we can go get the, the man. Um, if we want to make this problem more challenging, we could ask, uh, you know, when might the helicopter return to the station? And then, you know, it would take 30 minutes to um, retrieve the man, most likely, based on the amount of fuel that we have to set aside. Um, so that brings us to 4 p.m. by the time the man is on the helicopter, and then another two hours to go all the way back. So the helicopter would, would arrive uh, probably around 6 p.m. And, you know, our final step is to check our assumptions and clearly state our final answer. And so, you know, with almost every TJ admissions problem solving essay, there's a set of contextual elements that can be detailed further. And these may impact the results of the problem. We'll call these assumptions. And if you have any additional time at the end after explaining all of that in your essay, uh, you can detail these further as needed. So one example of an assumption here is that the boat's traveling at a constant speed of 10 miles per hour and that it has enough uh, fuel to cover hundred miles. Um, you know, what if the boat doesn't have the fuel to cover 100 miles? And you know, what if it's covering, or what if it's you know traveling at variable speeds? Which is in reality, you know, boats don't travel at the exact same speed uh, in that entire stretch. Another assumption is whether or not the injured person is able to withstand the pain for about 12 hours um, before seeking medical attention. Uh, that's usually a pretty tough amount of time 
um, and there may be alternatives that need to be explored um, if the, the man needs some medical attention there. And another assumption is that the helicopter is in good condition um, and it doesn't you know, face any malfunctions, there's no damages in the four hours of travel. Um, you know, these are, are more outlandish assumptions, but um, all very real things that can happen. And so um, you wanna be stating assumptions as far as possible and it shows that you're kind of thinking about the context of all of these problems. And so, you know, we're, we clearly state our final answer. So to reach the injured man at the optimal time, the helicopter should leave at 1.30 p.m. Uh, and assuming the boat uh, travels in the direction of the helicopter and at the same speed throughout its entire journey. So that wraps up uh, the 2016 problem solving essay uh, solution. And for similar solutions, practice prompts, complete instructional materials on how to ace the TJ admissions process, uh, you can consider working with us. Uh, you can visit tjtestprep.com for um, all of our TJ admissions prep. Uh, you can register for small group coaching, self-paced online course, uh, as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching. In 2021, approximately 81% of our students who had completed the course uh, were admitted to TJ. Uh, we also have a free admissions blog that's available to everyone um, that has special insights, tips, and tricks on how to ace the TJ admissions process and best prep yourself. And if you're looking for prep more broadly, like math, coding, college admissions boot camps, you can visit our parent company at eduavenues.com. Of course, you can always email us at tjprep at eduavenues.com if you have any questions. And uh, if you like this video, please uh, leave a like and subscribe. It really goes a long way for us. And we'll see you next time.